This video is part of my Wireshark packet analysis and ethical hacking course. Have a look at this playlist to see all the videos in this course. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to capture packets in a switched network. You need to be careful when using switches. You won't see traffic to known MAC addresses. In other words, unicast traffic to known MAC addresses won't be captured because the switch will only forward that traffic out of specific ports, not to your monitoring station. So you need to span the port or introduce a network tap or a hub to be able to capture traffic. Okay, let's get started. So in this Genesis 3 topology, I'm gonna to add a device that will allow me to capture traffic basically as if I had a monitoring station in my network. So let's pretend this Ubuntu PC is our monitoring device. I'm not actually gonna use that for monitoring. I'm gonna use GNS3 to do it directly. But let's pretend you were running Wireshark on this Ubuntu PC. I could, as an example, use a Windows PC here rather than Ubuntu but I'm gonna simply capture the traffic this way. So again, if I start capturing on this link, will I see the HTTP traffic from the PC to the server? I'll filter for HTTP here. Nothing at the moment. On the client, I'll refresh this page. Don't see anything. Manually type it in. Don't see anything. Shut that down. Open it up again try and connect to the server. We don't see any HTTP traffic on this link. But what I'm gonna do now is span or mirror the port on the switch. So on switch one, I'm gonna go into global configuration mode. I'm gonna type monitor. This, is, this goes by different terms. It's known as span or monitor or mirroring. We're gonna use the term monitor here. So I'm gonna monitor a session, I'm gonna give it a number one. I'm gonna specify the source interface as gigabit zero slash zero. So this interface is gonna be the source. And then I'm gonna say monitor session one destination interface is gigabit zero three. So source interface, destination interface. The switch is gonna copy all traffic from this interface to this interface. So let's prove that. This is the Wireshark capture from Gigabit03 to the Ubuntu host. In other words, over here. On the client, refresh the page. Notice I suddenly see HTTP traffic. Refresh the page again. I see more HTTP traffic. So because I'm spanning the port, I can see the HTTP traffic. So if I had a monitoring station here, so I was running a Windows computer or some other computer with Wireshark directly on it, I would need to span the port like I've done here to be able to see the traffic. Again, network vendors use different terms, mirroring, monitoring, span, but notice show monitor session, and let's say session one, you can see that we are capturing traffic in both directions on this port, and the destination port is gigabit 03. Capsulation is native. We're not adding any additional frames to the captures. So you'll actually see the original frames here. Notice source MAC address, PC going to the server, source IP address of PC to the server. So frame, packet, segment, random port number, going to port 80, and you can see the actual request made there. So if we look at the server response, we can see, for instance, the PNG file. Notice nothing was modified. So with a browser, it often caches the data locally. So it doesn't re-request all the data to save on bandwidth. But if I shut that browser down, open it up again, and go to the server, and I'll go right down. Again, we see not modified. So let's actually do this. I'm gonna open up a private window and go to the server that way to force it to do everything again. 
So here we go, client request. Here's the reply from the server. And notice you can see all the data from the server. So you can see title of the web page. You can see the actual text in the web page. So in summary, be careful of where you capture traffic. In this example, we wouldn't see the traffic on this link or on this link unless we enabled port monitoring or span the port. In other words, you need to get the switch to copy frames from this interface out of this interface. It wouldn't normally do that if traffic was going from the client to the server. You have to enable the mirroring of traffic to be able to see it on a switch. With a hub, you wouldn't have to do that. A hub floods traffic out of all ports, but a switch doesn't. So once again, don't forget, you need to be careful where you're monitoring traffic if you want to see what's going on. As an example, if you want to see what's going on on this side of the network, you want to put a probe or some device on that part of the network so that you can see what's going on. You could implement remote span where you copy traffic through a tunnel from one side of the network to another, but you need to be careful with that because of overhead and because of the amount of traffic that you're going to be receiving. So it would be better to capture traffic locally if you can. People disappear.